Hello everybody, Brian Callback here at Rubisco Seeds, out here today at one of our research locations, having a midwinter inspection of some of our winter canola products. Uh, we'd like to thank the PNW Canola Association for this opportunity to showcase some of the work we're doing here at this location. At this location here in Kentucky, these plots uh, here uh, were planted following soybean harvest, uh, planted uh, no-till into the soybean residue, uh, seeding rates here were around 200,000 uh, live seeds uh, per acre dropped. Uh, very nice establishment on these plots and the crop right now is in dormancy. At this location we have a germ plasm trial where we're looking at some of our newer materials versus what we have commercially available. Our commercially available products are Plurex, Phoenix, uh, Mercedes and Kicker. We also have multi-hybrid seeding rate trial here where we have three different seeding rates across seven different hybrids. Seeding rates range from 100,000 live seed drop per acre to 300,000 live seed drop per acre. Uh, we continue to uh, work with seeding rates as we're you know, always continually trying to drill down to the most optimal seeding rates for customers in the different scenarios that they meet in, uh, with commercial canola production. Uh, we also, of course, uh, uh, have research plots in the Pacific Northwest, uh, both small plots, and then we have some uh, commercial strip trials as well, which we place a lot of value in commercial strip trials. Uh, because uh, we get to see these uh, products over uh, a ra uh, range of different soil types in the fields and, and uh, just, you know, di differences you see in a, in a larger field scale experiment than you'll see here. Uh, we also research plots in, uh, in Canada, in Ontario, where we have uh, all these products uh, again uh, in, in a small plot environment, again just to, uh, to build up an information base on these products and their uh, you know, relative properties uh, in those, you know, in those different areas, uh, different soils and different climates, uh, so we can make decisions and, uh, you know, help help growers to, uh, you know, make good choices when it comes to picking hybrids for the fields. I thought it would be a good opportunity today to look at, uh, at some of our commercially, current commercially available hybrids, which we also have here as checks. Uh, here we're standing in a plot of uh, Florex, the CL, uh, the CL being for Clearfield. Florex is a uh, 2G Clearfield hybrid, which uh, means it can be sprayed over the top with Mazamox uh, post emergence. It also confers uh, excellent uh, resilience to uh, uh, soil applied herbicides from the ALS and IMI families, which people may be using in their soybean uh, herbicide rotations or in their winter wheat rotations to control wheat. Florex is quite a unique hybrid. Uh, we've seen uh, some very good resilience uh, to cold on the front end of the growing season and then as we progress uh, towards maturity when, when the uh, soil moisture reserves get depleted and uh, gets, temperatures get hotter, it uh, seems to show some very good uh, resilience to those conditions as well. So quite an interesting product. Also it has excellent oil content and uh, from a yield perspective uh, both in commercial fields and in plot settings it definitely has shown some great potential. Uh, definitely exhibits uh, some very good uh, winter hardiness characteristics. Uh, oftentimes when you see a winter canola plant that has a prostrate growth habit, like we're seeing here, the leaves are spread over the ground, the crown is, is tied to the ground, confers a lot of cold tolerance, uh, as in when the very cold temperatures come, the crown is, is protected, it's close to the soil line, and the soil actually uh, forms a, uh, a resistance around it when it freezes. A resistance to uh, the crown exploding when the temperatures get really cold. Uh, Plurex definitely has that uh, attribute and it's uh, one of the reasons why we feel it has a you know a good fit in some of the more challenging uh, locations for winter canola in the US. You know so far uh, from, from it being out in the marketplace uh, farmers are, are very happy with, with this product and we continue uh, to see this uh, hybrid uh, expand in our portfolio. We have, uh, Phoenix CL, our, uh, our second uh, Clearfield winter canola hybrid, uh, that's commercially available. Phoenix again has uh, demonstrated extremely high yields. Uh, what's different to Phoenix uh, versus Plurex? It has a higher adaptation to uh, heavier uh, silky clay soils. Uh, some of these soils in, at times of the year can be uh, wet natured and we feel Phoenix uh, it appears to have very good resilience in those conditions. Uh, of course, that's not a concern in many winter canola areas where it's where soils are drier. But uh, this is what we've seen with Phoenix, and this is why we continue to offer uh, Phoenix uh, along with Plurex to growers, so they have uh, uh, different options, if you like, uh, for different scenarios that they, they find themselves in different soils. And, of course,
course, different regions of the country as well. Uh, Phoenix, again, uh, 2G in Clearfield, uh, with the same resilience and soil applied, uh, ALS and ME uh, chemistry. So again, a very versatile product, uh, very high yielding. Over the top of, uh, of this Phoenix uh, plot here, uh, probably looking at a stand, you know, uh, give or take, uh, cross row here, maybe three to four plants per square foot, which we feel is a very, you know, comfortable population to have coming into spring. Uh, we've seen, you know, plots with fields, commercial fields plots with, with seeds uh, or plants, uh, established plants, if you like, coming into spring, uh, even, you know, down as far as two per square foot, uh, still have, having full yield potential. So here, you know, is a very, we're very comfortable with the stand that we have here. Plants have room to grow, uh, spread out a little bit, and uh, keep prostrate on the ground. Here we have uh, Mercedes Winter Canola. Uh, Mercedes has been one of our uh, flagship hybrids, or basically is our flagship hybrid for the last several years, uh, based on its uh, very high yield performance, its uh, very good cold tolerance, and its adaptation across a wide range of soils in different winter canola regions of the country. Mercedes has been uh, very, uh, you know, a very good hybrid for growers. And for processors, it uh, typically will come out on top of the plots uh, as regards uh, number one yield and then the highest oil content. Mercedes exhibits, uh, again, a very uh, prostrate growth habit as well during the winter. Uh, a nice uh, uh, canopy structure that shades the ground. Uh, we see these larger plants uh, spreading out over the ground here and uh, giving, giving good ground cover. Uh, you can see here the, the color, the pigmentation on it. Uh, it's a sign of the crop being in dormancy. Uh, these are uh, heavy silty clay soils here and uh, you know we've had some uh, freezing temperatures over the last few weeks so the crop is now in, in dormancy. Uh, Mercedes uh, again as, as I mentioned earlier it's a uh, you know quite a popular uh, hybrid in the Pacific Northwest and also it performs very well in, uh, in southern uh, uh, Ontario in, in uh, Canada and it's uh, been uh, quite successful in the Canadian market for the last couple of years as well. Uh, as we see the interest in uh, winter canola picking up there and uh, for sure we need uh, some good call tolerance in uh, winter canola in, in, in those markets and uh, I believe Mercedes uh, has demonstrated uh, that attribute over the last couple of years. Last but not least today I'd like to take a look at this plot of Kicker. Uh, Kicker has been a hybrid we've been looking at in plots for the last uh, three to four years and uh, it uh, demonstrates uh, you know up to a 10 percent yield advantage to mercedes across uh, different regions uh, is what we've observed and uh, that's a significant enough yield advantage for us to uh, bring this forward as a commercial hybrid we do have some commercial uh, fields of kicker in the pacific northwest uh, planted in 2020 uh, yeah the fall of 2020 Looking forward to seeing how those uh, turn out here in the harvest of 21. Uh, looking over the top of uh, this kicker plot, very comfortable stand here, three to four plants per square foot. Uh, you know, for sure, uh, optimal population for uh, for high yields heading into spring. Um, one aspect of kicker that uh, I'd like to mention here is its maturity, uh, especially in its, uh, you know, in, in relation to Mercedes. Uh, we feel it's pretty similar to the Mercedes uh, product. However, uh, we'd like to, uh, uh, see how uh, it stacks up in, in the commercial settings this year where you can see the hybrid across a range of soil types in a field you know versus Mercedes. Uh, looking towards the market here uh, in 2021 uh, we're uh, encouraged to see the price of uh, canola has uh, risen along with all the other commodities of course as well uh, and just to mention uh, all the products that I've mentioned uh, today are all uh, eligible for non-GM premiums uh, where, where you have markets that uh, that wish to purchase uh, non-GM material for, for their needs. These uh, plots today, uh, again, like I said, they're in dormancy. Uh, you know, so we're making decisions here on fertilizer and things here in a few weeks as we get closer to uh, spring equinox and, and, uh, and the soil temperatures warm up. Split apply the fertilizer here and probably end up with uh, close to 150 pounds or units of uh, total nitrogen here. Then of course probably 15 to 20 pounds of uh, sulfur and we'll probably add some more on at this site as well. And that that's, we feel is pretty much uh, delivers optimal yield in this location uh, most years. Thank you for your time, thank you for watching and uh, please visit uh, www.briscoseeds.com uh, if you have any questions about any of our products. Uh, we'd like to thank you for your, for your business uh, in previous years and uh, look forward to 2021.